Sheikh, what is scaling up? Okay, scaling up as we define it now, in the context of the work we're doing, is to replicate, adapt, and expand successful interventions to reach more people in a sustainable manner. Scaling up includes the dimension of innovation and trying to scale it up. You can also start with something that's been already proven and go to scale. Uh, the question is how you go about scaling up and probably we'll come back to it. But you define it in a way that is broad enough to avoid uh, you know, philosophical discussions about definitions and, and operational. And in a way also that uh, makes it possible to address concerns about efficiency, sustainability, to help us focus also approaches to, to partnership. The uh, Brookings Institution reviewed EFAD's experience uh, with uh, scaling up um, in the past and came up with a, a whole big report. What was the most common problem that Brookings found with scaling up in practice? The good news was that we have Large, many many cases of successful scaling up in different regions, in different countries, and in different regions, and under different circumstances. We can say we have taken operations to scale over 10, 25 years, but the challenge is, if we are here today, where do we want to be in the next 25 years, and how do we get there? I wanted to ask you also about the, the logic of scaling up, uh, in a way, and you mentioned already that there are a lot of successful projects. Why is it then that only few aid agencies have picked up these successful projects and brought them to scale? It's almost like a negligence in, in a way. Is it too costly or what do you think? Well, what's the finding there? What happened is basically scaling up has been taken as granted. That is, if you have three sort of situations, you have operations that are already at scale, and for some reason you assume that you know, those are going to be sustainable. Scenario two is you have successful intervention, and you assume that for some reason it's good to have good practices, and uh, well, they'll take to scale. We've learned that good practices are not good enough. Third situation is one where you have a problem, you have no solution, and therefore you have to test right? new solution. You have to pilot. The challenge there has been that you assume that for some reason, by having these thousand flowers, then something will come up and this will naturally go to scale. Well, often happen is that, uh, you know, partners and governments sometimes also without partners, they end up with expensive boutiques that are pilot, that are very successful, but they are not scalable. What we need to make sure is to avoid basically two basic errors. One is to scale up the wrong thing, because you can have a successful uh, intervention, but it's really not uh, scalable, so it would be a mistake to scale it up, right? To scale up the wrong tree. The second mistake to avoid is to scale up the right thing, but in the wrong way. But the second case, typical in cases of value chains, for example, where if you start with a program where your main concern is about, let's say, productivity increase. Typical cases, for example, you know, cassava, cassava multiplication can be done relatively easier, and it is a vegetatively propagated crop, so very quickly you increase production, right? Then you realize that your next problem is ending up this production sort of with, with glass. As you go to scale, then you have to look at the other segments of the value chain. Now, whereas your first uh, phase of, you know, in this journey has consisted mainly in an operation with, which was led by government, the second phase will require different types of intervention with different types of actors, mainly private sector. So if you scale up uh, through value chain without uh, engaging the private sector, then you are scaling up uh, the wrong way. Now, when it, um, when it comes to EFAD's approach to scaling up, um, you mentioned already the whole raison d'etre um, Maybe you can go a little bit into how your work actually feeds into what you described there as the scenario of that complexity of, of the problem. Well, what's, what's your approach? Maybe you can also go into the example from Kenya because you just came back uh, from Kenya. 
All right, maybe, uh, okay, very quickly, the various stages of our engagement in this scaling up as an institutional journey. We have started with a practical stock take of examples of successful scaling up. And we asked ourselves, what would it take in terms of changes to our policies, procedures, strategies, or way of doing business to scale up or to support scaling up in a more systematic and proactive manner? So that was phase one. One of the conclusions was that we need to do a little bit more in terms of filling knowledge gaps. So we entered into a second phase consisting in having more country case studies. We have eight of those, including some upgrades of previous case studies. We have also done some thematic reviews, you know, looked at scaling up and institutions, we looked at scaling up and partnership, we looked at scaling up and value chain and of course scaling up and monitoring and evaluation. Now the results of that second phase of work has just come out earlier this year. And we are now engaging in a third phase which consists of internalizing the scaling up agenda in our business model. What does this mean? Our business model consists of having a country in you know, our cooperation framework. We call it COSA. Other partners in the World Bank call it CAS. Other partners call it different names. Basically our country strategy. Then we say also that when we design projects, we have to do it with a scaling up mindset. When we do supervision and implementation support, we have to do it with a scaling up mindset. Uh, building up partnership, policy dialogue, and knowledge management have also to be done with a scaling up mindset. So that's in, we are now in that particular phase, and that's the context in which I have recently visited Kenya, in fact, as part of a series of visits. Last year, it was to see how a scaling up a mindset can help us focus our strategic uh, engagement in Kenya, choosing the areas and the focus of intervention in terms of access to assets and services, where do we focus, uh, geographic focus, etc. And uh, we have also taken uh, different projects that are at different stages of maturity in the pipeline. And at each stage we are saying, what does a scaling up mindset mean? And this has been very, very interesting experience and that had also an activity of training of uh, country teams, uh, familiarization seminar, developing a scalability assessment for successful models, etc. And we have in Kenya two very interesting examples. For example, one was this Mount Kenya uh, program, which was a pilot, you know, working on four watershed to test uh, uh, models of natural resource management linked with incentive to the community. Now we're moving into a scaled up phase, which is from four to 21 uh, catchment areas, and that's in the upper tunnel. And uh, it's a clearly a scale up operation. And we realize, for example, just to give you a practical example, our approach to project management is different. Whereas under the first phase, you have a project management unit you know, that was running the show. Now, in this case, we need to involve other partners, you know, from private sector to NGO to government run trust fund, which trust fund, and so on. So we're moving from a project management unit to a project coordination team. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing that the scaling up mindset will help you help you do, and and therefore we are therefore you know avoiding that particular type to error that is scaling up you know successful model in a wrong way. Uh, another interesting example in Kenya is the risk sharing facility. Now some uh, refer to it as a guarantee fund. This sharing facility, in fact, is a glorified thing for a guarantee fund. They have plenty of guarantee funds, you know, in the past, but they have failed. What we've discovered is that it is key to have, in addition to those guarantee funds, that are intended basically to lower the bar for the commercial banks to lend to communities who would otherwise be left out, right, of the normal financing. Uh, so what we do is to make sure that while you set up this guarantee fund, you also uh, make sure that support services to make sure that these people are good borrowers. It's been so successful that for you know uh, the banks are lending ten times more than the guarantee fund, and in fact they're going out now and looking for 
people to land. So what we are doing in Kenya is basically linking the physical uh, uh, commodity value chain with the financing value chain in collaboration with AGRA, the Alliance for Green Af Revolution in Africa, is to set up that fund uh, that will encourage the commercial banks to lend of their own money. For $5 million uh, of fund, uh, guarantee fund, the banks are lending, providing uh, uh, 10 more, uh, 10 times more money, 50 million. And this expense has been so encouraging that the government of Kenya itself has set aside, has made a commitment to engage $12.5 million each year, you know, against which the commercial banking system is expected to, to uh, uh, commit and to lend $125 million. You see, this is a very interesting case of government setting a vision on the basis of, you know, they noted that the agricultural sector is receiving, or is being financed only, you know, receiving only 3% of the commercial sort of bank financing. Now, now they have set a target to take it to, you know, 15%, and you need to identify practical measures, and this risk-sharing facility is one of one of those. Mm -hmm. You're working with government, you're working with AGRA, you're working with... Uh, you know, commercial, commercial bank. You, we've been starting out with the question, you know, the role of the donors in global donor platform. Uh, where do you see the platform being a, a network of donors coming into this? Um, is it more on the policy side or is it more on the institutional change side? Because um, you, you mentioned already that to some degree the donors have a, have a stake in there, how they actually support the scaling up, or well, they don't for some reason. Where do you see where do you see uh, a role for the for the donors here? Well, scaling up means for each of us, not only as a you know financing agency, but also technical agency and uh, development partner in general. It means that it means that we have to change the way we do business. That is the way we design projects, the way we design our kind of programs, the way we build a partnership the way we engage in policy, the way we support uh, you know, capacity development at grassroots level, at project level, and also at you know, sector level. Now, what the platform does is to provide, as its, names, as its name you know, says, a, a venue for exchange of experience. Um, we need to learn from, uh, from each other to make sure that we avoid uh, the mistakes uh, the platform provides also a nice, uh, good venue for identification of opportunities for partnership. Now, if you think of the next steps, both for IFAT and maybe also for what you've just been describing for how the platform could be involved. Under the phase three of our uh, scaling up agenda, we're doing, uh, let's say, three, four things. One is we are going to intend to build up our knowledge base. We are going to do more, uh, you know, case studies, thematic reviews. But this we want to do it in the context of a few selected, focused countries, hmm? uh, chosen with geographic diversity, chosen also in terms of you know the level of implementation, uh, institutional capacity, finance, project state, etc. We'll have a diversified set of countries which will have a learning value from a corporate and global viewpoint. Now in those countries we are going to engage at different stages you know, of the programming cycle with the scaling up mindset. The lessons from those experience will, and that's the second aspect of our engagement, feed into the development of guidance tools for scaling up. Then we'll also be linked with uh, staff capacity development, joint learning, joint development of knowledge product, etc. And that clearly means that we have to work with other partners. You see? Now, uh, the broader framework through which we are doing this is in the context of what we call community of practice and learning alliance. For scaling up, and we see the platform as a you know important uh, partner 
you know, in the development and the implementation of that community of practice and, and uh, in learning alliance. Now, one practical, there are three, four activities that we need to do during this sort of pilot phase of this alliance. One of them is to have some sort of inventory of you know, available literature and lessons on scaling up. Right? This is something that we intend to do, and we'll be happy to see ways in which we can collaborate with the partner, with the, with the platform, and through the platform with other partners. Number two, we will want to uh, see who is out there as a like-minded partner who would want to engage in this, not only at country level, but also on the international policy arena. Uh, we want to have a, a, a better understanding of who is out there that is interested, right, and who is doing what that might be of use uh, for the community of practice in general, and we are thinking of developing a survey. We are working on, you know, on the on the aspects of it, and um, that is, for example, something that could be, you know, administered administ through the platform. Remains for me to say that uh, for our viewers uh, that obviously these events that you mentioned are also on the website under on the website calendar for more information are constantly built up um, as the information becomes available plus that we are also planning to have a virtual briefing with you where you can go a little bit more into detail about scaling up and inform our members and we will also place the recording of that virtual briefing on the website afterwards the date i guess is not finalized Thank you very much. Great. Great. That's a wonderful example of uh, what the platform can do. Hopefully, before the IDC event, we'll have a more open and more participatory uh, interaction involving other colleagues here in NIFA and in other institutions. 